Russ can fly. Get it. Russ can fly. Get it. Russ can fly. Get it. Russ can fly. I'm present and accounted for. Gonna keep on at this thing because I'm going to make this happen. And the one thing about trying to reach a goal, you just gotta keep working hard at it. So here I am. But before I get in the plane and handle my business, wanna definitely get some subscriber shout outs. Please forgive me if I mispronounce your names. As my grandmama would say, charge it to my head and not my heart. Um, but this first one, this brother, uh, reached out to me on Instagram and said I hadn't given him a subscriber shout out yet I am so glad you did that sir because that's exactly what I want people to do if I haven't given you a subscriber shout out because I want to recognize everybody who has subscribed to this channel so this first subscriber shout out goes out to Quezzy James brother Quezzy Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. Thank you for reaching out and letting me know that I hadn't given you a subscriber shout out yet. I know that you're about to do your own journey or you're already on it. Whatever it is, keep me posted, brother, and hopefully one day we'll get to meet up and fly. Okay, so my other subscriber shout out to brother Keyshawn Hickman. Brother Keyshawn, it was such a delight to meet you the other day um, at the uh, Pilots Who Inspire event that we had with the Black Pilots of America. I'm so glad to see that your son is fully engaged. I love it. I'm so hoping that I can get more young men like your son involved in aviation. Uh, it's amazing. Um, so my other subscriber shout out to Brendan McCarthy. Um, Commander Toucan to Commander. What's up, Commander? Listen, I know you're on your own aviation journey as well. Um, keep me posted on your progress. So, Quezzy James, Keyshawn Hickman, Brendan McCarthy, Commander Toucan, and Maya Payne, thank you so much for following me on my journey. It really means a lot to me. And I'm hoping that I can do more and inspire more people and get more people just as engaged as I am and excited as I am about aviation because I love this stuff. Let's get out of here, time to fly. Um, but thank you for the subscribers. Let's get it. I actually did a pedo heat check. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna start doing that from now on too. Yeah. Pulling that checklist out. Doing some of that beginning stuff. So this would be passenger you brief. You can do that now, it's not that hot, so. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, so this is a uh, small general aviation aircraft. Um, one of the things I definitely want to tell you is just how to operate everything. So um, in the event you need to open the door, you basically just lift this latch, pull it, push it back, the door will open. In order to close it, pull it firmly toward you, push it down, make sure it's latched. With your windows, the latch is the same way as you've seen on you know, <laughs> other old school, old school houses. Just pull the window closed, push the latch down on the skid plate. In the event that the window pops open, don't worry about it. It'll just be noisy. Um, but you know, if you have a problem closing it, I probably won't help you until, especially if I'm in a critical phase of flight. Once we get to cruise or whatever, you know, I'll help you close the window if there's a problem. Your seat belts. Your seat belts are um, full harnesses. Um, so just like on the private airplanes, lift the latch, latch comes out, and then you just take the two, almost like a baby car seat, in order to put it back on, Put these back in together and latch the whole thing together. Any questions about that? No, sir. Um, so in the event of a fire um, cockpit, we, we are equipped with a fire extinguisher. But there is a latch down here. So you're gonna basically unlatch that and pull the fire extinguisher out. And wherever you see the fire, you're gonna shoot right at the base of the fire. Um, so the other thing is, if you see something, don't be afraid to say something. There may be something I missed. So if you think you see another aircraft or a bird or something, say, hey, Russ, I think I see an aircraft um, or I think I see a bird. Don't assume that I see it because I may be looking at something else. I may be looking at my instruments. Um, so don't be afraid to call something out. Any questions? Um, the one thing I will say, if you feel a little sick, um, you know, it's not unusual. Um, don't panic or whatever. 
I have a little bag if you feel really sick, you know, so you can just use the bag, no pressure, no judgment, just use the bag. Um, if you feel sick or if you feel like you're hyperventilating where you can't catch your breath, you can use that bag as well. Um, and those aren't unusual. Um, you're gonna feel movement. That's just the nature of small aircraft. Don't worry, that doesn't mean that anything is gonna happen. It's just the plane reacting to the air. Cool? Yes, sir. All right. Maybe also in, in that it's all great. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're saying like, oh, when you see something, say something. Um, maybe just before that ad that you want a sterile cockpit, right? In okay. The taxi takeoff, climbing out and descent and approach phase, whatever it is, like, oh, when I'm coming and taking off, landing on the airport itself, which means no non-essentials talking or anything like that. Okay. Um, but then you can go on like, but if you still see something, you could, if you see something that you think is an emergency, like, right, you know, right, right, okay, like, okay, like, like go on like that. Okay. Like, you don't want them to start talking to you about, oh, you see the game last <laughs> right, night, right, right, um, right, right. All that stuff, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Clear prop. All right, and everything's clear. Wings traffic system 9 one go back Sierra, taxiing from the upper ramp for runway 24, Wings. Okay, so you might have been wondering, what the heck was all of that about? And Russ, why would you keep all of that talking in? Because, you know, you're not getting to the flying. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do with all of these videos is to basically be as transparent with every aspect of my training. And one of the things that is going to come up on the check ride is to make sure that I do all of the checklist items appropriately and believe it or not a passenger briefing is a required item not only on my checklist but in commercial flying as well so if you've never paid any attention but when you get on a private i mean when you get on a commercial airline You'll see people stand up and they'll talk about oxygen masks. They'll talk about seat belts. Well, believe it or not, that is federally, regulatorily required for every flight that there be a passenger briefing. Now, of course, there's some things that I'm adding on the list because my assumption is many of you who will be flying with me have never been in a small general aviation aircraft. So there's two things I wanna do. One, I wanna inform you about the things that are required and be um, compliant with the regulations, but I also want to make you comfortable and not be worried or scared about the flight and enjoy it as much as you possibly can. So that whole thing that I kept in is part of a required checklist item. And I wanted to just kind of show you guys that aspect of my training, um, because that was actually the best passenger briefing I had done. Again, you still heard my CFI talk about a sterile cockpit, which means, you know, no talking during takeoff, um, taxi, landing, that kind of stuff, just so that the, the pilot, me, can concentrate on making sure that everything is copacetic. Anyway, all right, so let's get to some maneuvers. Putting in work, baby. Wings traffic, Cessna 91, Quebec, Sierra, departing runway 24, turning out to the northwest wings. Heels to the floor, full power. Right rudder. All right, engine instruments in the green, oil temp, oil pressure, all good. Airspeed is alive. Pass V1 at rotation and rotate. Now, I'm sure you've seen by now on the news about the impacts that we're feeling here in the Northeast from a lot of the wildfires out in the West. And I got to tell you, it was really bad this day. Um, it was just hazy and, you know, it, it looked like you couldn't really you couldn't make the distinction between clouds and the haze in some instances. I mean, most for the most part, you could tell. You know, it was it was the haze, but man, it was just so weird to see just kind of like smoky haze just lying around. And it was really, really hard to see. And it really did kind of impact the lesson, unfortunately. You're barely prison over there. Yeah. Like the prison straight ahead, let's see how far that. 
So if you look out the windscreen, you can see it looks foggy, but no, that's not fog. That is haziness from the smoke. And it's just amazing to think that what I'm seeing and what you're seeing is basically smoke from a wildfire all the way across the country. Crazy. The main issue is not, the, like, we can probably see crap, right? Oh, but right. Kyle, it's still, you, know. you have no reference to the horizon. Right, right, right. there's, yeah. yeah. Which is tough. Very. Or, uh, one four. That was the thing. I mean, it was just so hard to see the horizon, as you can see in that clip. It, it, you know, trying to do steep bank turns, you know, when you can't distinguish between the sky and the ground because it is just a foggy, hazy mess just made it difficult. So, but I will say that this definitely taught me something because the METAR or one of the, the weather reports that I received was saying 10 miles visibility. Now, as a VFR flight pilot to be soon, I hope and pray, please Lord, thank you. Um, you know, I got to pay attention to that because, you know, visibility is everything. And so I got to tell you, if I took off and I saw this, your boy would be right back on the ground. Yeah. We won't be here for much longer. <laughs> this is, uh, bad. In the suit. This is the way it really looked. I mean, this is no trick of the camera or, you know, an off setting or whatever. What you see out the front windscreen, what you're seeing outside of me, um, this is the way it looked. I mean, and it was just like, you know, what the heck? So, yeah, we <laughs> it got a little concerning because, you know, theoretically we were still in VFR conditions, but, you know, visual, being able to see visually was very, very tough. Perfect, bro. Let's do a power off stall. All right, power off stall. Uh, do clear are good. Okay, 2600. Four miles to the east, inbound, full stop. And stall there. Descent, start the descent, right? Remember, stabilize descent, part of the UCS. Okay. Roger that, we're just losing some altitude, then we're going to turn it. Car beat off. First notch of flaps up. Looking for 65 and a positive rate. Level two leave with pop up, uh, six miles on the west, coming in for... My angle of attack. I see 65. And... Uh, Bilbo traffic, Skyhawk now entering 45 to 28 level. So after a while, it just got really bad to see, and we both were in agreement that, you know, it was really difficult to do maneuvers, especially ground reference maneuvers, where we actually go down to about 1,500 um, above the ground to basically pick, you know, ground references and do maneuvers around them. And we both were of the opinion that it would be very difficult to kind of see a lot of the ground references. Plus, we were just kind of like a little bit freaked out by the fact that, you know, we really, really couldn't see that well. And, you know, just trying to look for other traffic and all that other kind of stuff. So we just decided to actually cut this lesson short. But so, so that was the bad news. The good news is I was perfect. <laughs> So everything that I did, I mean, I did very well. Um, and it just boosted my confidence that much more. So, you know, I, I will say that, you know, every lesson is worth it. And every time I fly, I learn something new or I experience something. And I gotta say this whole California West Coast wildfires thing is really crazy. I mean, to think that in the future, when I'm flying here in the Northeast, if I hear that there are, you know, California or Oregon or Texas or whatever, or if there's wildfires anywhere, I'm gonna have to be paying attention to that because it could very well impact the quality, you know, or, or the, you know, the, the amount of visibility 
in our area and that's just like really crazy and of course i'm just so sad at what's happening out there and all the property damage and i'm definitely praying for all the folks out there and if you're impacted by any of this just know that you know i'm praying for you because i mean that's got to be devastating so me not being able to finish the rest of my flight lesson is the least of my least of the worries you know so any rate so that's it we're gonna wrap this up but I wanted to keep this lesson in. I started not to post it, but I wanted to show, you know, a couple different aspects of things that are going to come up in the check ride, including the, the passenger briefing and the impacts of weather. Weather is really crazy, but an important, important aspect of piloting. All right, that's it. Let's finish her up. All right, so another lesson under my belt. That went pretty good. Um, couple little things that I need to you know shore up again it's like the tweaks you know those small tweaks but the thing that I liked about that flight is definitely on the steep bank turns um, even though I couldn't see squat I mean the, the I mean it is just I mean it is really hard to see it's like almost instrument conditions and they keep saying 10 statute miles visibility they are lying <laughs> anyway um, so it definitely felt good that I got better at, you know, getting to those steep bank turns. Um, and to my brother, Victor, thank you for that suggestion because that was all of that. That has really helped tremendously. So anyway, without further ado, let's get out of here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. I really do appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. Um, so with that, Russ Kid, Russ Can Fly, I'm out. Let's do this. See ya.